Well, hello, YouTubers. Welcome to my channel. Say hi. Oh, this. Bye. We are talking about an article that came out in Yahoo that really asked the question that I was even wondering myself is the Sussex's love affair with the Obamas over? Is it over? I think it is fair to say that they are apprehensive about their continued relationship with this couple because of the things that we have seen happening in the news and it becomes very clear to most thinking people that this couple has an agenda. Now we know when they went to the the uh, Lion King premiere, it was the night that Harry to go to the funeral of some fallen soldiers that he was going to be there at that event. And rather than going, he went with his wife to this premiere <laughs> for the Lion King and had the nerve to ask Bob Iger if his wife could get a, a voiceover job. And we know she eventually did, but just it just looked so bad. It just looks so bad. <laughs> it was like so much desperation. It's like you're in the receiving line and then someone comes up to you that you're supposed to be there to greet and they ask you for a job. What are you supposed to say? You, you are in a, a very bad predicament where you have to kind of laugh it off and yeah, but it was so tacky. It was so just beneath anyone that is in the royal family to do something like that. And all that was going to be for them going to the Obama's party was the exact same thing, was Schmooze. to schmooze with the, the Hollywood crowd, those who she would love to, to, to have a relationship with, like big time people that can help propel her acting career. And the Obamas was like, no, nah, no, you ain't coming to my party. You're going to use it as a networking opportunity to, to get yourself a job. I'm inviting A-listers, double A-listers who can come to my party and who can actually dig deep to donate to this program that I'm, I have for helping young boys and girls. We know they did not get invited. So I saw an interview with uh, Dickie Arbiter, he was talking about it. And, and then this article came out and I really wanted to talk about this. So, so Barack Obama for his 60th uh, birthday celebration on Saturday night, um, he had, um, he was, he were treated to hand mixed mar martinis, gourmet cuisine, live entertainment, and the former U.S. president's $12 million uh, mansion at Martha Martha's Vineyard guests including Jay-Z and Beyonce Tom Hanks Steven Spielberg George Clooney they flew in for this exclusive bash which featured specially branded napkins and face masks and tongue-in-cheek backstage passes for uh, the assembled VIPs so this was going to be a party if anyone is going to be at this party or invited to this party you are going like there is no people on this list that was going to this party did not show up mm -mm. everybody showed up when you get this invitation yeah they showed up to this party because this party was going to be the who's who of who 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 in Hollywood and this would have been the perfect opportunity for IC to be there because they would have been able to network like crazy. But the whole thing is, is the Obamas is trying to get money from these people. I see coming and they trying to get jobs and money from the people on the guest list. And the Obamas is like, no, uh, uh, we're not having this. We're not having a repeat Lion King on our hands. She's going to make sure she's front and center present when anyone is who is important is in town or if she gets an invitation to something, she's going to show up and she is going to be scheming, you know, okay, what's the plan? What's the plot? Okay, we go, who's on the guest list? Okay, what projects are they doing? Okay, uh, who do I know that knows this person? Like, what are the connections with our friends? Like, there's a whole list of conspiracies going on when she knows she's going to be anywhere. 
because this is how she is scheming her her plans to the connections for her for their branding for their career so now despite the Obamas having not attended the Sussexes wedding thought that the newly California based couple would be uh, shoe ins at the Obama 60th right uh, prominent progressives and newfound members of the influ influential U.S. metropolitan liberal elite. Yeah, you would think they would be a shoe in to this party. It's like you didn't hit all the check marks. Check, 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 liberal, check, Hollywood living right now. Currently, check, okay, uh, uh, girls' education, check. Like all the things that are important to this couple are also important to the people that they want to get close to. So, of course, they should have a shoe in, you would think. Oprah is uh, believed to have been asked to save the date. So why weren't the Duke and Duchess on the dance floor? Could this be a sign that they, they, uh, the Sussexes, that the love affair with the Obamas has gone cold? Hmm. Confusion surrounds whether they were snubbed or simply could make it after the wedding page six, which had broke the news of Harry's multi-million pound book deal reported that they were not planning to attend the shindig. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, you can say I was not planning on attending just like I can say it too. And it's the truth. I am not planning on attending the Obama's party. Thank you very much. And you keep it moving, right? They didn't get an invitation, but they are going to say they had not planned on attending. Well, you know, she just had a baby and all a baby. No one has seen. So why would she be attending? She's got a legitimate excuse. Huh. I'm going to tell you something right now. She could be due to drop a baby and would still show up. She could have had that baby the same day as the party and she would have shown up guaranteed. She would have been coming to that party like, you know, well, you know, I just had the baby, but you know, I just had to come. I just had to come. You know, I'm good. I'm good. It's okay. You know, people pop back from pregnancies all the time. It's not a big deal. You know, she would have easily been there had she had had that baby that day. So no excuse is going to really legitimize why they did not get an invitation or why they were not there. They should have been there. Okay, so having welcomed their second child um, into the world in June, the couple are currently on paternal leave, although Megan did manage to record a video with actress Melissa McCarthy last Wednesday to mark her 40th birthday. So, yeah, so you on maternity leave, but you still like trying to do stuff. So we know it ain't that deep of a maternity leave because first of all, you don't even have a reason really to be on maternity leave because you ain't working that hard. You really, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing that really you're taking a break from to be quite honest. Okay. So although Obama had turned 60 on the same day, August 4th, neither he nor Michelle were seemingly invited to participate in Megan's new charity initiative to donate 40 minutes of time to mentor women returning to the workplace after COVID. So yeah, the Obamas weren't even in her initiative. So we can see that there is something going on. There is some speculations. You know that word speculations? We speculate because she snubbed them. They snubbed her. Uh-oh. <laughs> Trouble in paradise. Yeah. Celebrities who were asked to support the 40 by 40 drive included Hillary Clinton, singer Adele, and fashion designer Stella McCarthy. Yet, with some criticizing the scheme as self-serving and woke, yeah, woke is what it is. Could the Obamas be fearful that their ongoing association with the royal couple risks attracting negative publicity? You got that right. Now look at what's been happening with Melissa McCarthy. I've seen a lot of comments of people saying that they are really shocked that she would participate in this with Megan and that they're not going to see her movies anymore because 
I've said it from the very beginning. Any celebrities attaching themselves to this train wreck is going to find themselves in the train. And they're going to be going down with the train too. You cannot do it. You got to treat them like poison. Their behavior, how they treat people, how they use people, their clear intentions are poisonous. And anywhere near this couple to seemingly work with them, to be a part of them, anything is going to attach their poison to your brand. So they need to stay far and clear away from them and they know better. They know better because Obama, he was a president. So, you know, he got people that can look you up and he didn't looked up everything. He knows all the details and they are just not people that treat family right. And we know Michelle said that family is everything. Family is everything to the Obamas. And unless you have family values, you don't really have much in common with them because they're not social climbers. They are the people that do what they have to do with the hard work. I mean, I love them or hate them. The Obamas have done the work. I see this couple infamous couple. They have not done the work. They are leeches that want to attach themselves to other people's celebrity to, to get them to their own new found platforms that they are seeking. And most people that really look at what we see intelligently and objectively will see the clear motives of this couple. It's all there in the news. It's all there for people to see. And a lot of people don't want to see it. And they're usually younger people because they want to attach to the, the idea of her breaking free from this regime that's holding her back. And Harry, the prince has saved her and rescued her from this torturous lifestyle that she had, which there is going to be a new Cinderella. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about this, but there's a new film coming out about Cinderella that has the, let's say the trappings and the look of similar story as what has happened to Megan. Yeah. So I'm not sure about how close of the story, but it was talked about being very similar to, to her own life and how she broke free from this, this torturous regime and trying to make the similarity with, you know, as Cinderella, she was getting away from the evil stepmother and stepsisters. So there's some similarities. And I think they want to base it on Megan's life. And I'm not sure who the people are, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out who it is. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. So it says some in democratic circles have suggested, um, that the, uh, Sussexes attempts to, uh, ape everything the Obamas have done since they left the white house could have jeopardized their once special relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause the Obamas is like, well, what you doing? You trying to do everything that we've done and you don't even have half the education that we have, half the work experience, have the notoriety and celebrity or whatever it is to do the things that we are doing. And you trying to come and do the things that we do and you try to brand that and make it your own. No. This is why we always talk about them stealing ideas. Megan is very much known for plagiarizing. And just like with that 4040 deal, we know that that was something that Nelson Mandela had come up with. The articles that she has written have had similar articles already published prior to that just so happen to be very similar to the pieces that she has written. There's a number of them. So, that's their, their mojo. That's what they do. They copy. They don't have their own authentic thoughts. They are not authentic. They're not sincere people from the heart, but the, like I was saying, but the young people 
are not all, but I'm just saying, you know, the sugars are the ones that really are close to, you know, every, everything that they do, like they can do no wrong. Those people are enthralled with this couple and the things that they do because they don't want to look deep and, and, and underneath it all. So that they'll get swept up into the PR lies and mistruths and the fluff of it all. But hey. Maybe they'll come around and really see it for what it is. So after leaving the royal family and moving to Montecito near Santa Barbara in March last year, Harry and Meghan appear to have used the Obama's um, um, modus operandi as a blueprint for their own statewide relaunch. Like them, they have sig uh, signed a lucrative multi-million dollar deal with Netflix to produce their own documentary series while Harry last month announced that he was writing his memoir memoirs for penguin random house which is the former president's um, publishers his autobiography a promised land was released in november in 2020 two years after michelle published her own life story becoming and this is the thing they're not even close well they're like 10 years 12 15 years behind the obamas in age why would you think within your late thirties that you would have experienced the kind of life where you're ready to tell your story. You haven't even really lived your life life yet. And it just looks like you just trying to be something you are not. And people can read into that. People see that for what it is. And it's and at the end of the day, it has really hurt them. It has really, really shown them what it's all about. They're the best thing that they could have done really stay there, but in Canada and shut up. But if they didn't want to shut up, okay, go to Canada and, and learn, be quiet, live in seclusion, have Harry like secretly producing something or working on your craft and then come out of isolation with all this experience. And then people will respect you. But you just going to come over to America from being in the royal family and ain't done nothing to try to better yourself with any kind of experiences for a career education wise. And you just go like, OK, I want to do this. I want to write a book about my life. I, you know what? As a matter of fact, I want to write four books about my life because it's so deep is that much information. I got to write four books. And one of the books I don't even want to publish or even talk about till the queen is dead. Like, why would you do that? Why? Okay. And then she, we know she says she's coming out with the book, the wife, she's coming out with the book. So they just perpetrating all day long, trying to be, more than what they have experienced in life. And it's going to really hurt them. It's already starting to hurt them. This is a sign. And if anything, they should be learning from this, that they did not get an invite. It's time to step back because they're doing too much. People talk about or send me emails and say, you know, why do I uh, have to talk about them? Well, you know what? Hey, get your butt out the news and I won't talk about you. How about that? But they want to be in the news. And so we're going to talk about it because this, like I said, is a train wreck. This is unprecedented. The things that this couple is doing has never been done before. It is off the chains, off the mark, unprecedented behavior by a couple that is a train wreck. And that's the only thing that is interesting about them is the fact that they do these things that are so appalling and egregious. You just got to look, you just got to look. You'd be like, what they going on Oprah? What? They said they writing a book. What? One book can't come out till the queen is dead. What? The Royals, they said, said their family or their child is a, uh, what color is it going to look like and trying to be like they racist. What? Oh, they cut me off. They didn't want to give me any more money after I left the Royal family. What? Like they coming out talking, airing all their grievances into the public and it's become news. They're making some of it news with their PR agency. And so people are talking about it. So they need to just shut up. 
they are in a situation right now that they are shooting their toes off. They, by my, by my estimation, they didn't shot off about five toes. Okay. They only got five more before they can't walk no more. They're going to just be dead in the water. Can't get up. Can't do nothing. They need to stop while they limping.